I think we've had, heard some great experiences from um, our presenters, and I think you'll be really interested to hear uh, Tom Ware, a PhD candidate, ASU Management Information Systems, uh, Clinical Effects of Robotic Assisted Surgeries. Welcome, Tom. All right, thank you for having me. So as stated, I am a PhD candidate in a business school, and so in particular, information systems. And so um, what I'll be discussing today is a quick overview of my research, the data that I used uh, within uh, to answer my research questions, a little bit about my, a little bit more about my experience um, using the VA data and, uh, and some recommendations as well. Okay, so um, to give a quick introduction, as a fourth year PhD candidate, my particular research interest is at the intersection of AI and robotic engagement in human behavior. And I would like to um, label myself a practice-driven theorist. And so within the context of this research, I have particular interest in robotic and human robot augmentation within the healthcare setting, which brings me to my interest in engaging in research using centering robotic assisted surgeries. And so we use inguinal hernia repair as the surgical context for this project. And I'll explain why in the next slide. Um, but for this research, we identified 25, over 25,000 observations uh, over a 13-year study period from 2010 to 2022. And using this data, we were able to uh, identify a couple of interesting findings. Uh, the first is particular to a comparative study of robotic-assisted surgeries um, comparing uh, to other uh, minimally invasive techniques. Uh, particular to this project, a manual laparoscopic technique uh, for inguinal hernia repairs. And we use this uh, context because this is one of the most um, highly uh, performed types of surgeries um, in the U.S. and, um, and worldwide as well. And so some findings that we, uh, that we determined using this data um, was first uh, particular to the effectiveness. And we found a greater effectiveness in reducing intraoperative risk and surgical performance um, of surgeons who engage in robotic assisted surgeries in comparison to manual laparoscopic surgeries. And uh, secondly, and what I believe is, uh, is most interesting, is we find that there is a significant spillover effect of those surgeons who engaged in robotic assisted surgeries at least once to improving their overall performance. And they actually, and those surgeons actually perform better uh, in manual laparoscopic techniques um, post the collaboration with robotic assisted surgeries. And so when I read the literature on robotic assisted surgeries, there are a few themes that are very obvious. Um, the first is the immersive experience that physicians feel um, when engaging in robotic assisted surgeries. Uh, with the use of, um, of uh, counsel and having to control the tools um, using, uh, using these robotic arms from a remote counsel, uh, you have to have a higher level of concentration and engagement with the task. And, um, and secondly, a second theme that was, um, that was very obvious within the literature is the haptic feedback and how that provides a source of communication from the robot to the surgeon to manage their performance during the actual surgical operation. And the third theme that was evident was in regards to the necessity of having to um, have a significant level of expertise um, when engaging in robotic assisted surgeries, meaning that the surgeons who, um, who have a higher level of competency uh, with inguinal hernia repairs uh, specifically 
can actually perform better using robotic assisted surgeries. And so as, a, as an information systems researcher, I was curious to, I was curious about extrapolating these themes to other instances that involve this physical augmentation of, of robotics and in, uh, in human capabilities. And so from that birth, the term congruent augmentation, which defines the interactive and immersive experience, uh, uh, augmentation experience uh, when engaging in, uh, in, knowledge, in knowledge work, um, particularly in occupational settings. And so, um, and so the, another contribution is to, I wanted to explain a benefit of congruent augmentation. And I believe this also applies uh, in a general sense that there is a learning effect that results from this congruent augmentation. Uh, so as stated in the findings that there's a spillover effect um, from engaging, uh, after engaging robotic assisted surgeries to the manual process, um, there, that is essentially uh, describing a, a, a novel um, experience for these experienced um, or these expert physicians. And behavioral literature um, within uh, behavioral um, theories within experiential learning literature states that um, experts who engage in, in task using a novel experience can actually glean from that experience and that and they can carry over to other instances. And so um, and the last is we look to um, contribute to the robotic assisted surgery literature uh, by uh, describing the positive effects of engaging in this type of surgery versus manual surgeries with uh, the most comprehensive data set available. And so we choose we chose inguinal hernia repairs um, because, as stated, it is the most commonly performed procedure in the U.S. and in the world, uh, with potentially um, approximately 800,000 surgeries uh, that occur um, in the U.S. in 2000 globally. And, um, and so this type of surgery represents some of the most state-of-the-art manual techniques uh, when it comes to task completion and surgical operations. And so any effects that we find should be particular to the augmentation benefits from robotic assisted surgeries. And the VA provided an uh, opportune um, environment to study this phenomenon because inguinal hernia repairs are prominent amongst men. Um, particularly, uh, literature states that half of men will incur an inguinal hernia injury, and some of those will require surgery. And so the VA being the largest healthcare system in the US with over 170 medical centers and over 1,008 patient, outpatient centers, um, it provides the perfect uh, opportunity to study this phenomenon. And so uh, from the VA data, uh, over the course of 13 years, we were able to identify uh, initially uh, 27,000 observations, um, but we removed some observations if they were duplicates, and we also wanted to ensure that each of the variables that were included in the data set were complete for each observation. And so that final number was reduced to 25,000 um, observations using two CPT codes for the initial hernia uh, injury and for recurrent, uh, recurrent uh, inguinal hernia injuries. And we were also able to identify each type of surgery as either being initial or recurrent, bilateral or unilateral, or robotic and, or in robotic and manual. And so, um, and so latitudinally, we were able to also uh, expand the type of variables that were included in the data set. Um, and so we uh, were able to identify patient characteristics such as age, 
uh, the race, gender, and other health factors uh, pertaining to obesity and previous smoking history as inguinal hernia, um, inguinal hernia literature has pointed to those, those two factors being important to, the, to patient outcomes. And so we also included variables regarding to the operational complexity, variables related to uh, physician characteristics, um, and, uh, and as well as the facilities. And we focus on four dependent variables related to intraoperative risk uh, pertaining to the conversion of blood loss, um, the, uh, the, post, the time it takes to recover after the surgery, and uh, end of uh, wound occurrences um, occurred during the operational procedure. And so we were able to utilize this data to answer these two research questions. So with potentially the most comprehensive data set, if I wanted to first determine if surgeons learn from robotic assisted surgeries, I felt it was necessary to contribute to the conversation regarding the overall effectiveness of robotic assisted surgery. So that's why we started with the initial research question as the literature in robotic assisted surgeries with inguinal hernia repairs uh, points to there being um, a lack of consensus regarding the effect, um, where some studies saying that there is no difference in effectiveness in robotic assisted surgeries versus, um, versus other minimally invasive techniques. And, and secondly, um, in, that, in answering that question, pertaining to its effectiveness will allow us to determine if there is an overall benefit for surgeons, which led us to our second uh, research question regarding the, um, regarding the surgeon robot congruence and its effect on its learning, on um, potential uh, learning effect. And so to answer the first question, we engaged in, um, in linear um, regression using fixed effects where we used where we used four uh, dependent variables, those four dependent variables with robotic assisted surgeries being the um, being the main independent variable of interest. And we were able to find that there is uh, significant reductions in blood loss and um, in conversion in particular uh, for using robotic assisted surgeries in comparison to those other man, minimally invasive techniques. And for the second research question, we matched surgeons who have used robotic assisted surgeries against those who have never used robotic assisted surgeries. And so the ones who have used robotic assisted surgeries used it at least one time. And then so we matched using some criteria pertaining to the level of experience and some performance metrics, meaning uh, meaning similarities um, in the conversion rates, uh, for example. And we engaged in a difference in difference regression models and we were able to determine that, um, that those physicians that have used robotic assisted surgeries at least once also perform better in manual laparoscopic surgeries versus those who have only used manual laparoscopic surgeries. And so we, uh, and so with this research, we uh, believe that there are a there are practical and theoretical implications. Uh, particular to practice is we point to uh, point to the superior benefits of robotic assisted surgeries, um, where that question is still open ended, and uh, and theoretically we look to introduce the congruent augmentation term applying that to the robotic assisted surgery context and also describing the learning effects of congruent augmentation within the robotic assisted surgery context. And so a little bit about my experience uh, with the VA. So my, the initial conversation occurred um, November of 2021 actually with, uh, with an investigator with an appointment with the VA uh, via the National AI Institute, uh, 
His name is Christos McRitis. He also has an affiliation here at ASU. And so I won't go through each point step by step, but to give a brief overview, um, starting that following spring is when we started the documentation process of the work without compensation agreement uh, that was initiated from Christ, from Christos based off our, based of, based from our um, mutual interest in wanting to engage in research. And so from there we had to uh, to fill out a bunch of forms and do a train do a bunch of trainings and I mean hours of trainings um, with background checks and fingerprints. And then in about in that summer I get access to the VA environment. And from my perspective, that's it. I, I have access to the data and I'm ready to go. But that was not the case. <laughs> so so um, I quickly learned that I needed to get access to the, Vinci sense, to the Vinci system to be able to access that data from there. And so that took another uh, approximate, um, yeah, approximate five to six months. And in between that time is when I started to build my research team. So Christos uh, McRitis is the PA, is the PI at the VA, who is my main contact for a lot of the administrative stuff and the CDW and things of that nature. Um, and so during this conversation, it, it was brought up that I needed to also um, have a, a VA partner who is an experienced physician. And that's when Dr. Dev uh, came into the conversation. And I think it was from an introduction from Christos. And that occurred in September. And, um, and throughout the time while we're waiting to finish the, um, the documentation to get approval from the DART request, from the initial DART request uh, for the prep to research phase is when that team expanded to Dr. Vinod um, and, uh, and Dr. Felipe who was not here, um, but, um, and so that is when the project really started to take form. And, uh, and I was also introduced to the MD clone platform at that time. And the MD clone, MD clone uh, platform was instrumental for that initial look um, to determine how many inguinal hernia surgeries that were occurred um, identifying the percentage of robotic assisted surgeries and able to uh, and able to get a high level uh, analysis to be able to engage in hypothesis testing and so um, and so in the March of 2023 I was able to find there were some findings there and then um, and then that summer is when I started the IRB process in July and it became fully executed in November of 2023. And so between the initial conversation and now it was approximately two years. Um, but, uh, but as far as engagement in the actual analysis, it was approximately a year. And so I'm just going to quickly go over some, some limitations. Um, there could be some systematic differences in those patients who select robotic assisted surgeries versus those who don't. Uh, so some communications to determine exactly how that decision would be made would be helpful to empirically control for that. Um, and, and additionally, we don't have a, a clear understanding of the type of, uh, or of the models that were particularly used in the surgeries, which ca could have different technological um, uh, advances. And, but there are some other research questions that I plan to, well, that I'm starting to engage in, um, in where uh, I am targeting IS, information systems, and healthcare journals, particular to the robotic assisted surgery team and uh, in the, in the um, how robotic assisted surgeries reduces or potentially reduces variances across surgeries and across surgeons. And so that would be uh, the, my next set of projects. And, uh, and so I appreciate uh, you attending my uh, 
my talk, and uh, and I'll be happy to take questions later.